So right here we have order a draw. So first it's always going to be blood culture bottles. And when I say blood culture, this is the set that I'm talking about right here. This is going to be first. So that's for like little kids. In this hospital, since it's pediatric, you may just need one. And you see it has, you can put one to three right here. You can do eight to 10. So that's first. Just some quick things that I want to add about blood cultures. Um, before collecting the sample, you must clean the skin off with a chloroprep stick. Depending on how your job works, you would either have to also clean the bottle off with um, alcohol or the chloroprep before collecting the sample. This must be inverted eight to 10 times. Blood cultures are used to check infections. If you do have a hard stick, it is okay to get the aerobic by itself just so they can at least have one sample of blood culture and we are when you are done this must be inverted eight to ten times and also depending on how your job works you may have to put how many mls your initials and also the site location which you took the sample from second we have um coag which is this right here this is the coag this is this one right here so the key to this, this this vial has to be filled to this line. If you don't, you have to do a redraw because it's not gonna be accurate. So please note that you have to fill this tube to this line. And also when, when using a butterfly, you need a waste tube. So I would just say, get another one of these. So, you know, none of these additives or anything like that will be in the line. So just take one of these, wait till the blood comes down, and then just replace it with another one, just so you can get it filled all the way. So just some quick little things that I want to add. It is really easy for this blue top to get clotted, especially if you're using a butterfly needle and the blood is just taking forever to come out. Just know you just need to go ahead and do a redraw and just collect the sample at another site. Um, the vial must be filled up to the line um, so coag can test it properly if it's not filled up to the line it will be rejected and you will have to do a redraw um, also do not use any other tube as a waste tube especially when using a butterfly because you don't want the other additives to end up in that vial and messing up the test for the patient. Um, the tests that are included for this are a heparin assay, PT, PTT, INR, and a DIC screen. Next, we have serology. Um, they use this for like iron and thyroid and like pregnancy tests. Um, this right here, this is the red tube serology. They spin it down into the serum. So some things that I want to add about the red top is that um, it is used as a clotting activator. So do not be surprised um, by the time you get done collecting the sample and you're putting the patient information on the vial that the specimen is clotted. Um, that's perfectly okay. That's how it's supposed to be. Um, also, just know that for every two cc's of blood that you collect for a red top is one cc of serum. So just be aware that if you have multiple red tops um, don't try to combine those tests just go ahead and collect one um, red top for each test because they need that serum um, also this is like for pregnancy thyroid and iron and things like that chemistry which means you know a CMP or a BMP and things like that um, they test medicines and things like that so yeah so for chemistry, you do have multiple um, vials for this department. You will have um, a SST, you will also have a lithium heparin, and then you will have a sodium heparin. Um, just be aware that SSTs are always collected first before the green tops. Um, whether it's a gold or a tiger top, SST comes first. After the SST, it's going to be the lithium heparin. This can either be a light green or a dark green um also this is test this test is for like a cmp um p 
PTH, ionized calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, um, CRP, and things like that. Just know that the dark green is always last. Um, sodium heparin is always last. So just be aware of that and don't forget. After that is going to be a lavender chemistry. So for instance, if you have to do like a ESR and things like that, what you want to do is you want to do this one and then do this one. Because if you do the hematology before this one, it might mess up. You always want to do a chemistry with the chemistry. So when you have a lavender chemistry, make sure you do it after green. So yeah. Next we have hematology. This is like CBC, um, H and H, things like that. Um, basic stuff like a CBC with div. Um, and I do want to I do want you guys to know like when you have a CBC with diff you don't have to fill this whole thing up they probably need like right there probably they really need to where the label is at so if you ever have a CBC that's kind of short just fill it and send it the the worst thing they can do is reject it and tell you to go do it again so yeah you don't need much for a CBC I'm just gonna let you know that now you heard it from me like seriously you don't have to do too much next is blood bank blood bank is usually pink that's how we did it um at my last hospital but here they do not carry pink tubes so for here when you do a typing screen or um blood type and things like that you just want to make sure to try to fill it as much as possible so they can have enough to do each test that they need Okay, so for the lavender, some things that I want to add is that this sample can get clotted really easily. Um, this sample is known for clotting the most out of all of the samples. Just know that when you're collecting this with a um, butterfly, if it's coming out slow, you might as well just go ahead and get a new sample. Um, and also, if you do have like a CBC and an ESR or A1C and you can't get enough blood to have two separate samples, it is okay to share the sample. Just put the CBC label on first so hematology can get it and then give it to chemistry. You don't want to do a chemistry lavender before a hematology. And then lastly, we have the lactic acid, um, you know, to check for infections and things like that. When you collect this, you cannot have a tourniquet on. Once you, okay, so when you're doing it, you can tie the tourniquet on, find the vein, stick the needle in, and once blood starts flowing, you wanna release it. And also, you have to put this tube on ice. Um, so it's best to go ahead and get the ice before you stick just so as soon as you get done you can go ahead and just stick this in ice so for this test please just remember do not do not do not have a tourniquet on when you are collecting this specimen if you have the tourniquet on while you are collecting the specimen then the results are going to be extremely high and it's going to raise concern for the doctor so just please do the right thing and do not Put a tourniquet on the patient when collecting the only reason a tourniquet should be on is because you're trying to locate the vein that's it so this is just a honorable mention this is a acd yellow top it does come after the gray top um it is citric acid dextrose and trisodium citrate in this tube um it usually comes in a glass container this is used for dna paternity tests and hiv cultures so these tubes are dark blue or called royal blue. Basically, these are just for trace elements and K2 EDA whole blood. Um, you would basically draw the sample with whatever is on the label. So for example, since um, the trace elements has the red strip, you would draw it before the red top. And for the purple EDTA, you would just draw that after your CBC. So whatever is on the strip, just draw it with that family group. All right, guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoy. Comment, like, and subscribe. And let's chat in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys.